welcome to my channel. My name is Stella and you are in the Glam Zone. If you're new to my channel, thank you so much for checking things out. I hope you like it enough to stay a while. Please subscribe and also do not forget to click on that little bell button. That's a notification button. That way every time I upload any new videos, you will get notified. And if you're a returning subscriber, I want to say a big thank you. Thank you so much for hanging out. Thank you for being part of the family. I appreciate each and every one of you. Today we'll be talking about one of my very favorite things and that is skincare. We're gonna be talking about the canvas on which we put the art that we call our makeup. I'll share with you what I know about skincare and in the comments section, I would love, love, love if you left comments about what it is that you do that works for you in your skincare regimen. Now, as essential as it is, skincare can be very confusing. If you're one of those people who like me when I first came into this country and I went to look for some moisturizers and things to uh, take care of my skin, I was absolutely confused. It was just so much on the shelves. I didn't know what to touch, I didn't know what to leave, and it took me years and years of testing and trying and having mishaps with my skin <laughs> to finally figure out what works for me. And in this video, I will share what I know about skincare and what it is that works for me, and hopefully it'll help somebody out there. And just so you know, I have combination skin, so I have an oily teasel, and then the rest of my skin is moderately dry. I just say dry, especially under my eyes. So the products I'm talking about uh, specifically for people with that kind of skin type, but then I'll also put some tidbits that I've found along the way for people with other kinds of skin, sensitive skin, dry skin, etc., etc. So let's get right into it. Now at the end of a long day, there's nothing I enjoy more than just taking out all the makeup from my face and all the day's pollution, the dust, all that stuff. And I do that by cleansing my face. How do you cleanse your face? Well, I have a two-step cleansing routine that I use. Now on a day like today where I have a full face of makeup on, including eyelashes, I make sure to first begin by taking off my eyelashes. And ladies, you don't want to yank on the false eyelashes because some of, it, some of your actual eyelashes will come out that way. What I like to do is either I take a cotton round and soak it with micellar water or I take a q-tip and then I put a little bit of micellar water on the tip or on the um, cotton round and then I just place it on my eye right up over that uh, eyelash and that'll loosen up the glue and that way I'll be able to gently pull it off my eye without ripping at my eyelashes. Now once I've taken off my eyelashes, that's if I'm wearing them, I go in with a cleansing balm and that is something that looks like this. And you're probably wondering what a cleansing balm is. This is something really neat that I just discovered. It's something that looks like, um, let me show you the inside. I don't know if you can see it. And I'm not gonna show the brand because this is not sponsored. They're not paying me. <laughs> so I'm just gonna show you what it kind of looks like. It starts in a solid state, but when you put it on your face, it kind of melts and then it helps dissolve or melt away that makeup that you have on your face, making it easier to take off your skin. I'm just gonna take a little bit so you see this it's state when it's still, can you see that? Let me see if you can see it. What angle? <laughs> I'll play around with the angle until we get it. There you go. Now it looks, um, for those of you who live in Kenya, it looks like Kimbo. That's a cooking fat. <laughs> That's the consistency of it. But look what happens when you put it on your, and we're gonna demonstrate using my, my hand, the back of my hand. So when you put it on, you just take that small amount, like I showed you, and then you just rub it on your face. Notice it's melting away, kind of melting into the skin. And I let it sit there for a little bit after I finish massaging it all around my face, especially if I'm wearing uh, lipstick and eyeshadow. I put a lot on there. I focus on those areas and then I go back in with um, either a face, a clean face cloth that has been put in hot water and wringed out. That way it makes it like warm and steamy. And I just lay it on my face, okay? And just pat. You don't wanna go crazy doing all of this hard uh, tagging because that's how you're gonna end up with prematurely um, aged skin. Like you're gonna give yourself wrinkles. So be gentle, you're not uh, harvesting cassava. Don't be going all hard 
just be gentle. Either pat, 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 because the next step you're going to use some kind of cleanser with, with uh, that'll take away whatever the oil, the cleansing balm, and any makeup that you have on. So be gentle and just kind of gently remove it, or you pat, 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 pat with a warm washcloth that's just for your face. Don't use it in other parts of your body because you don't want to. Um, get cross contamination and have a breakout on your face. So the next thing I go in with is an actual cleanser. And note that there's a difference. And I just found this out like what, 10 years ago, I didn't know. I thought a face wash and a cleanser were the same thing, but actually they're not. A face wash is best for people who have oily skin because it lathers up and it takes away some of that excess oil that you have on your face. If you have dry skin or combination skin, avoid face wash, use a cleanser instead. And what I used to think before I started getting into skincare and learning the products and what's best for my skin, I used to think that once you've cleansed your face, all you gotta do is moisturize it and call it a day. But boy was I wrong, and I feel so bad because I missed out on years and years of proper skincare and my skin is, like I like the way my skin is right now, but I just imagine it could have been better if I started these uh, steps earlier or getting more into face care or skin care earlier. Now, the next thing I do is I go in with micellar water. You might be wondering, what is micellar water? Micellar water is a type of beauty water, and if you look at it, it looks like it has like oil. It's, it's, it's something, a combination of some kind of oil and water. You have to read the back to see what the ingredients are, but all I know is that it's amazing. Whatever it is that's left over that you don't see after you've cleansed your face the first time around, it shows up after you use micellar water. I put some on the cotton round, I take it, and on my cleansed face, I just wipe over it, all right? And when you look back at that, face that you thought, oh, that's clean, I've gotten everything, the cleanser got everything, you'll be surprised at what you find. Right now, I don't have makeup, this is my hand, but if that was my face that I just wiped and I turned that cotton round around, you could see the dirt that you leave behind. And it's just, it's crazy how much is left behind. But this step, the micellar water, I find lifts away all the impurities because that's what it's made for, to lift up and loosen up all the impurities left over on your face after you've cleansed it. That way you have clean and fresh skin that's ready for the following steps. Now here's a quick tip, and I use this tip as well when I'm cleaning my brushes. Just the way micellar water breaks down the makeup off of your face, you can do the same for your makeup brushes. Imagine that. So what I like to do before I use any kind of soap or anything to cleanse my makeup brushes when it's cleaning day, I put a little bit of micellar water into a shallow bowl and then just lay the heads of my brushes on there, trying not to let the micellar water get into the part that has all the glue, okay? So I put it at an angle and let it sit there. And when I come back to clean, to clean my brushes, You'd be surprised, so much of that makeup and all that gunk just falls off, making it much, much easier to clean my makeup brushes. So there's a tip for you, something you could use for yourself. All right, the next step that I like to use in my um, skincare routine when I'm at the end of the day is I like to use a toner. A toner is a lot like micellar water, except that a toner restores the natural pH balance of your skin. Because sometimes the cleansers we use on our faces to clean our faces, have too much alkalinity that will alter the pH balance of your skin. Some might even have a little bit of acidity, depending on what brand you use. Toner will help restore that balance back, your skin's natural pH balance. And another thing that your toner should do for you is remove any bits of makeup that the cleansing or the micellar water did not take off. Another alternative to uh, a toner could be micellar water, or you can also use witch hazel, which is wonderful. It also leaves your skin feeling very soft and refreshed. And the next step that I like to use on my skincare routine is serums. I absolutely love serums. I love what they do to the skin. They target specific concerns if it's wrinkles, if it's dullness of the skin, if you're looking to have firmer skin, or if you're looking to add moisture to your skin, your skin is drying out. A serum is the best thing to use because it'll target that specific skin concern that you have. That's because they have a high concentration of very active ingredients. 
and the molecules are much smaller that way they absorb deeper into the skin as opposed to a moisturizer that a lot of times will set up over your skin it will deliver some benefits but not as well as a serum would do now the best time to use a serum is after you have cleansed and toned your skin but before you use a moisturizer now I use several serums at night when I'm doing my skincare routine and I will normally start with the lightest one that feels light to the touch and then finish off with the thickest one, the most viscous one. What I like to do on my clean face that's been cleansed is use my uh, serum. Now these come with droppers like this, you see that? And I just take a few drops, pretending this is my skin, but normally I put it on my hand and rub my hands together and then distribute the serum on my face, right? and then just pat it in. And I like to also not forget my uh, neck and also this area between the girls. What do you call it? Decolletage, whatever. I don't want to butcher the name. So you get what I'm saying. Just, and just so you know, they're also oil-based um, serums. And these have larger molecules than the water-based ones, the lighter ones. So oil-based serums you want to use or I use after my moisturizer or sometimes I even mix them together for example this is rose hip oil and I just take two drops I mix it in with my moisturizer or put it on top of my moisturizer as you can see it's gonna leave that uh, it's a little bit oily but then it's very very moisturizing and you wake up the next day your skin feels so soft you see that it gives you a nice little glow Right? I wouldn't call it greasy, just a nice little glow. But anything that's oil-based, for example, rose hip serum that I just showed you, you want to use on top of your moisturizer or you want to mix a few drops in with your moisturizer. Do not use it before you put your moisturizer on. Another important skincare step is exfoliating. Now you do not have to do this every day. I exfoliate my skin maybe once or twice a week, depending on what my skin is looking like. If I notice that it's just kind of dull, I will do it twice a week, but normally I do it once a week and that's always on a Wednesday. And this actually takes away all the dead skin cells that are on top of your face, leaving behind nice, fresh, smooth, new skin. It's very important that when you're picking out your cleanser to use on your face, that you pay attention to what the granules are made of. The sum that the grainy particles in them are too big and if you use that on your skin, you're gonna cause little tears on your skin, little micro tears that could become inflamed or worse, infected and cause you breakouts. So you wanna pay attention to that. Put a little bit, do a, do a skin test, a little bit on, the, on, on your hand, on your wrist, or the top of your hand. Just put a little bit of whatever it is you're thinking of purchasing for your face. Try it on there. If it feels too rough on your hand, do not use it for your face. You can also use homemade exfoliants. For example, you can use, if you use raw sugar, the Damirara sugar, I think it's called, it looks brownish. You mix a little bit of that with some olive oil, create a paste. That's a nice natural um, exfoliant. Just try and apply it to the creases of your face, like on either side of your nose, any place that's rough but avoid the eye area. You don't want to mess with that skin around there. It's very sensitive and it'll wrinkle up on you really quick. Another good example of something that I use myself is mixing some baking soda, not baking powder, baking soda or in some places called bicarbonate of soda. Equal parts baking soda, equal parts pure virgin um, coconut oil that has not been uh, refined. So if it's two tablespoons of baking soda, you use two tablespoons of unrefined coconut oil and it'll look like the balm I showed you in the beginning won't be melted but as soon as it hits your skin it's gonna melt and you wanna use a warm washcloth that's used only for your skin to sit over your face and kind of loosen up that oil and then gently wipe it off. Exfoliate, exfoliate, exfoliate at least once or twice a week. Something else I like to do and I do this on the same day that I exfoliate my skin is use a mask. This I do once a week and it does not have to be expensive. There's so many brands you can find at the stores and I'm very partial to Korean brands because I find that those things are effective. The sheet masks, those are wonderful. Other types of masks that I use are clay masks. Now what I like to do is to reconstitute that using apple cider vinegar where the mothers like they sell it at the stores and if you look at the bottle of the apple cider vinegar at the bottom of it you'll see some things floating 
I think that's the mothers that they talk of. Mix it, put it on my face. Once I feel it's starting to get tight or dry, I rinse it off with warm water. And the next morning, guys, when I tell you my skin feels like butter, just smooth to touch, this stuff works. It absolutely works. And it's good at uh, clearing like dark spots or acne marks. And it's also very good for the hair, but that's in a separate video. Just for the skin, Himalayan clay salt reconstituted with apple cider vinegar containing mothers or there's other natural options that you can use at home. Very simple, you can use a very ripe banana, mash it up, add some honey on there, mix it up to create a paste, leave it on your face for like 20 minutes, rinse it off and it'll leave you with baby smooth skin. And another one, and this is for people with dry skin, just use whole fat mayonnaise from the jar, like real mayonnaise, not that uh, low fat type, the real one, and apply that to your face for 20 minutes. Let it sit on there and then rinse it off with warm water. Pat your face dry with a clean, fresh washcloth that's only for your face. Simple. Now the last step to my skincare routine is moisturizing. And I want to stress to you the importance of choosing the right moisturizer for your skin type. If for example, you have oily skin, and you use a moisturizer that's heavy and oily, you increase the risk of clogging your pores and that will eventually lead to breakouts. So you wanna avoid moisturizers that are not specifically targeted to your skin type. Now, if you're applying moisturizer and you want to distribute it over your face, I try to avoid anything that'll make me tag on my face. So what I like to do is dot the moisturizer onto my face like this. You see what I'm doing? And then pretend your face is a piano and you're playing it. You wanna do that. You don't wanna go like this, okay? And you will thank me later when you're in your 40s and you have not a wrinkle on your face. You will thank me later. <laughs> you just wanna pat, 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 until it's all absorbed into your face and your face feels nice and moisturized. All right, and let me just show you what this, how this leaves my skin looking. Moisturized with a slight sheen, but not greasy, and it feels so soft. It feels luxurious on the skin, okay? And you'll be surprised at the price. It is not expensive. It's very effective. And because I do not want wrinkles anytime soon, I use anti-wrinkle creams a lot. All right. Now what I showed you, what I'm going to include in the in the in the description bar is for both I can I, I use a specific cream for my eyes because as I get older I want to avoid anything that will give me premature wrinkles. So if I use a cream that specifically targets wrinkles, I'm going to use that at night on my eyes. And I find that those eye creams are a little bit on the heavier side, you know? So that's why I don't like to use it during the day. But if I put moisturizer on my face during the day, I make sure to give it like 15 minutes, 10, 15 minutes for the skin to absorb it before I apply foundation on my face. So thank you so much for joining me in this video. I had a lot of fun talking about this. I enjoy this kind of stuff. If you want to see any uh, videos, just put a request in the comment section. I'd like to hear what you like to see and also share your tips. We like to share around here. Now, just a quick note. Guys, I will be gone for about two weeks, coming up soon, in the next 10 days. So please, 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 I ask that you forgive me in advance because I will not, where I'm going, I'll not be able to um, like uh, upload videos the way I'd like to. But when I come back, it'll be regular programming as always. So thank you so much, guys. I enjoyed talking to you today. I enjoyed hanging out with you today. I will see you in my next video. Bye.